Tap your heels together three times. And think to yourself, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's, there's no, no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. the original 1939 gingham pinafores worn by Judy Garland in her performance as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. Probably the most memorable scene in film history, um, at least one of them. These dresses are very rare. A few of them have come for auction. They all originated in 1970 at the MGM auction. This was acquired by a private collector. Um, you know, not a whole lot to say. This is part of screen magic and the history of filmmaking. I mean, this is one of the most recognizable costumes in the world. And uh, we're excited. Give them movie. back to me. Give them back. Keep tight inside of them. Their magic must be very powerful, or she wouldn't want them so badly. Okay, these are, without a doubt, the most important prop in film history. These are the actual ruby slippers worn by Judy Garland as Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. This is the pair. This pair was originally discovered in 1970 by Kent Warner, who was running the auction for David Weiss. This was the pair that Kent retained. And the legend goes, if you look at the heel, this is the only pair that has a slightly larger heel. And Reese Thomas, who wrote the book on The Wizard of Oz, and I agree that when they did the close-up and they came into the scene where the house just killed the Wicked Witch of the East, this is the pair you see because the heel is longer and you can see the red bottom. The other pairs that have survived have felt on the bottom. These are the only pair of ruby slippers that still have the leather soles intact. We believe these are the beauty pair. They were used for the insert shots. You would have seen these when Dorothy clicked her heels wanting to go back to Kansas. So I thought we could settle this like men. You thought wrong, dude. screen use hat worn by Marty McFly in Back to the Future 3 when he's in the Old West. Again, one of the many incredible pieces we have from Back to the Future 1, 2, and 3 in this Whoa. auction. Whoa! They really cleaned this place up. Looks brand new. Now remember, according to my theory, you interfered with your parents' first meeting. If they don't meet, they won't fall in love, they won't get married, and they won't have kids. That's why your older brother's disappearing from that photograph. Your sister will follow, and unless you repair the damage, you'll be next. In this auction, we have probably the most significant and largest offering of Back to the Future items that'll probably ever be offered at auction. Um, we have the DeLorean, actually used in Back to the Future 3, and here we have um, Michael J. Fox's uh, 50s jacket worn in the first film. Um, if you're a Back to the Future fan, we have everything that you can possibly think of from all the memorable scenes of the first three films. Costumes, set pieces, props, the car. I mean, it's a Back to the Future bonanza. considered the greatest racing movie ever made. Critically acclaimed, uh, Steve McQueen, one of his greatest roles, and it's interesting, Steve McQueen wanted this movie made so bad that they were going to scrap the movie. He actually did it for free. He actually gave up his salary to make this movie. He didn't get paid a dollar to make Le Mans. Um, this is his costume. Um, it's the holy grail of film racing. There's nothing better than this costume. I mean, the estimate's two to three hundred thousand dollars. I mean, this costume would sell for a million dollars. I mean, the the crossover with Grand Prix racing and the interest in this costume from all over the world it will far surpass 
uh, the interest of most film costumes because this is the greatness of Le Mans. This is the magic of Steve McQueen. We have the Pretty elegant, aren't they? Gotta take care of them. They're all I got left. Why did you get married? I fell in love. How do you know when you fall in love? I don't know. Can't eat or sleep. Like an ache in the stomach? Same thing. Only in the heart. You'll find out when you get older. How old are you? That's no question to ask a lady. This is a little uh, corner of Marilyn Monroe items. We have quite a few in this auction. This is a blouse that she wore in River of No Return, designed by William Trevia. Next to it is the dance outfit she wore in Let's Make Love. And then these are two interesting pieces. Earl Moran was one of the original photographers who shot her in the early 40s at the beginning of her career. Earl Moran did this nude painting of her. Uh, there are three known to exist. This is the most nude <laughs> that he did. Um, just a great, great piece. I mean, an extraordinarily great painting. And below it, this actually came from Marilyn Monroe's home in Brentwood. This was part of the original Christie's sale in 1999, part of the personal property of Marilyn Monroe. It was a famous cover of a magazine done in the 50s that this artist painted this uh, copy of the cover, and Marilyn was given it, and she had it in her home. Uh, so this was sold at the original Christie's sale. We have quite a bit of Marilyn Monroe in this auction. This is just a sampling. Part one of the December kickoff with the Profiles auctions. And then we have December 15th, 16th, and 17th, a trifecta of auctions. Day one is mostly posters and lobby cards and costume sketches, and it ends with television history. Day two is the best of Hollywood, the Ruby Slippers, Steve McQueen Le Mans, Bela Lugosi's Dracula, um, all the iconic pieces that we have are in day two. And then day three is just a standalone catalog of over 700 lots of vintage animation from all the studios represented. And that's it for 2011.